Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steve Hoffbauer. I'm your Palmdale mayor. So uh, the last couple of years, we haven't been able to do a state of the city with COVID and everything. And I know some people have gotten sick. I've had my fair share of challenges recently. I'm going to thank everybody in this room that picked up the phone and called me when I was in the hospital this last week. Uh, those phone calls were amazingly meaningful. You have no idea because every time those damn doctors walk in a the room, there's never any good news when they're walking in. So we're good moving forward, and we're looking forward to the uh, next set of adventures that are coming down the line here. Um, so uh, now I'll go back on script, and they're, they're going, so, <laughs> uh, so we got the 2022 State of the City address here. You know, it's my honor and privilege as we celebrate uh, with the city of Palmdale, uh, and we're just a couple of short weeks away from our 60th birthday. Is that amazing? 60 years, huh? <laughs> So uh, anybody here sing better than me that wants to start us off? We're going to sing happy birthday, right? All right. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, city of Palmdale. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Don't 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 drink that stuff. That's not the drink. Those that's not your little liquor bottle, okay? Don't ask me why I know. So they're gonna go cut the cake so you can have some dessert and I got some cupcakes here that'll follow. But we're gonna celebrate the first city of the uh, Antelope Valley. Um, we have a lot of local collaborations many community partners that are in this room with us today. And that's what this is all about. We've got more citizen boards, more citizen engagement, more uh, commissions going today than we ever have had in the history of our city. And that's the result of your collaboration, folks. So give yourself a hand for pitching in and all that. <laughs> We're gonna have some videos that highlight the, uh, what we've done through this collaboration, our enhancements to our quality of life, our growth, our jobs, our businesses, our infrastructure improvements, including innovative planning and design for housing, we got transportation, and continued efforts to keep our tax dollars local. Don't, nothing personal, county. So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at this first video and look at some of these collaborative efforts. Take it away. Regional collaboration has been a great benefit to the people of the Antelope Valley. In November 2020, Palmdale voters approved Measure AV, a three-quarter cent sales tax, which has allowed the city to invest over $5 million in Measure AV funds to support saves, law enforcement initiatives, nonprofit community, small businesses, and more. One collaboration that has made a significant impact is Wellbeing Coalition. Formed out of a need to address mental health concerns, this diverse group of individuals and organizations have come together to learn well-being science as a strategy to co-create innovative solutions to the region's health and economic challenges. They've already made positive strides with their Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Ceremony, Healing Garden, Zen Academy, an entrepreneur business training event, a senior well-being experience, and an unhoused women event. There's also the Palmdale Regional Recreation Complex project. Planning is well underway. Input is being gathered by the community now to build a world-class facility that will be a hub in the AV. And on behalf of the entire AV, the city applied for and won the Association of Defense Communities Award as one of the five great American defense communities for 2022. Our valley, with its rich aerospace and military, was recognized for exceptional commitment to improving the lives of service members, veterans, and their families. Families. And to entice visitors to come to the AV, the city launched a Visit Palmdale partnership with local hotels to support regional tourism efforts, including the expansion of special events, sports tournament, and visitor amenities. Visit Palmdale will work closely with Destination Lancaster to do more regional marketing and promotions. So 
So we got a couple of projects that are real near and dear to my heart, uh, and you'll hear about them more in the next video uh, after uh, Richard introduces his stuff. Uh, have you been over by uh, Marie Kerr Park and seen the new Courtney's Playground over there? That is absolutely amazing. So a few years ago, uh, I had one of my uh, Eagle Scouts that told me about the difference between an ADA accessible and a fully uh, uh, accessed um, um, playground for kids. Uh, more than just a ramp to get in. And uh, uh, little Courtney uh, ended up passing away after a tragic accident. Her parents used that settlement to help build that park right around the corner uh, from their home and build that playground over there. Um, we just had the, uh, the uh, ribbon cutting for that. And if you haven't seen it go over there, it's by the, uh, by the small field house. And it's, it's, it's absolutely uh, amazing. It's a fully inclusive play system. Playground created uh, thanks to their family, who not only uh, the Triana family, by the way, folks, let's give them a hand for what they did there. And, uh, and, and we're incorporating those same concepts into some of the uh, uh, new playground equipment and things we have, including the new Rancho Vista Neighborhood Park that's going to be opening here uh, in a couple of weeks after 25 years. Is that amazing or what? We finally got that park open. So the, these enhancements to these parks demonstrate innovative and inclusive design. Uh, the uh, Rancho Vista Park will have some meditation spaces in there. Uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of people have gotten involved in the community and, and donated trees. They've donated a, uh, a little library there for, for you to do the book exchanges. Uh, the dog poop station, uh, uh, yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? So. Uh, but it's, it's amazing. It's right next door to Esperanza School there. Uh, go by. We're going to have that ribbon cutting over there in a couple of weeks. Uh, watch for it. You should be getting it. And uh, it's, it's really uh, it's, it's going to be amazing. It's a tiny little park, but it means so much to that neighborhood and to the west side over there. Uh, so uh, now I want to invite uh, my good friend, Mayor uh, Pro Tem, Richard Loa. He's going to share some highlights of quality life issues here in the city of Palmdale. Mr. Loa. Thank you very much for that, uh, Mayor. Uh, before I begin with my comments, uh, I would like all of us to acknowledge the 30 plus years that Mayor Hofbauer has given to this city. Would we please rise in recognition of the mayor? He's given a lot of years of service to this city, and uh, I thought it would be appropriate for all of us to acknowledge uh, the mayor, and uh, I thank you for doing that. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Well, I'm Mayor Pro Tem Richard Lowe. I do represent District 2. One of the many reasons that the city of Palmdale is a great place to live, work, and play is because we have such a great sense of community that is experienced through the events and activities that take place in our beautiful parks and facilities, as well as providing access to all of these amenities. Palmdale provides many opportunities to build lasting memories for our families and friends. Returning after two years, children were finally able to hunt for eggs again at the Children's Spring Fest and Egg Hunt, I know it is an Easter egg hunt, at the Palmdale Amphitheater. After a record setting attendance in 2021, Dry Town Water Park has returned to sold out attendance nearly every weekend since they opened the season on Memorial Day weekend. Our four city pools located at Corson, Marie Kerr, Oasis, and McAdam Parks are open for seniors, swim and therapy, lap swim and therapy, and recreation. We are offering swim lessons at all levels. In fact, this year we're poised to uh, record a number of swim lessons, upwards of 2,500. Now, before I make any further scripted comments, one of the quality of life issues that we face in this valley as a region is homelessness, alcoholism, drug addiction. And very significant among those things is mental health. And this year, thanks to the City Council, thanks to our Mayor, we have allocated in our budget for 22-23 $2 million 
to address homelessness at our city level. Thank you all. So here's the video. Two new projects will help provide more accessibility for more people than before. One is Courtney's Playground. The city received a donation from Greg and Joanne Triana to be put towards an inclusive playground to honor their late daughter Courtney. It is located at Marie Kerr Park and allows users of all abilities to access musical play elements at ground level, as well as an inclusive whirl or merry-go-round accessible via wheelchair. And Palmdale's newest addition, Rancho Vista Park, located on Town Center Drive. Among the features are a shaded inclusive playground, an accessible walking path with lighting, picnic areas and trees, story time area, restrooms and pet waste stations, and a therapeutic wellness garden and meditation space. Bringing quality events is paramount to building a sense of community, and Palmdale has a full slate of outstanding programs on tap. The Palmdale Healing and Honor Field returned to Palona Vista Park, featuring 1,000 flags that honored our military, law enforcement, fire, EMT, and medical personnel heroes. All proceeds benefited local veteran charities. This summer, the city is rolling out its usual fare of the Music in the Park summer concerts and family movies at the Palmdale Amphitheater. The season started with a free concert performed by the 562nd Air Force band and the sold out performance of Patti LaBelle. Alt rock stars Smash Mouth stunned the crowds with their high energy performance and the next experience revisiting Credence on August 13th. On August 27th, the Antelope Valley welcomes home their own All for One in their Road Back Home performance. And the summer music series wraps up this year with the Palmdale Fireworks Show on Labor Day weekend, September 3rd. Family Movie Night has returned to the amphitheater this summer featuring your favorite Disney and DreamWorks movies. Bring a blanket or low back lawn chair to sit on and picnic basket to enjoy our beautiful summer nights under the stars. For additional details, visit www.palmdaleamphitheater.com. Music in the Park has also returned to Ponset Lawn Square and Dominic Masari Park. This free event features community favorite cover bands, activities for kids, and specialty food truck fare. Kaleidoscope, Palmdale's art and music festival, returned last fall to record-setting crowds and will be back this October. Come enjoy free activities to bring out your inner artist, listen to lively music, view amazing art, watch live mural artists in action, and so much more fun. For updates and to learn more, visit www.kaleidoscopeartfestival.com. Public Art 2 is helping bring the community together. Whether it be from various events such as Inkwell and Kaleidoscope or the robust public art partnership the city is engaged in, including our next public art sculpture titled Revolution by artist Heath Sato at the Palmdale Auto Mall. Revolution will create a sense of motion. Its mirror-polished stainless steel finish is reminiscent of one of the most common details on cars, Chrome. The seventh annual Generations Juried Art Exhibit is also coming up on Friday, August 26th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at Legacy Commons and Palmdale Playhouse. Enjoy the talents of our local artists on display and a free reception featuring live music and refreshments. Winners of the art competition will be announced at Palmdale Playhouse at 7.30 p.m. Look out for more beautiful examples of public art to be unveiled in the months and years to come. Thanks, Mayor, and thank uh, thank everyone for coming out today and squeezing in here with us. I was told yesterday that we sold out, and I'm thinking we're definitely going to need a bigger venue for, uh, for for next year when we do this. But nonetheless, it's great to see everyone here, and and maybe even uh, two food lines for next year as well. But, <laughs> but thanks for bearing with us. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about economic development and jobs. So Palmdale continues to move full steam ahead with new developments to attract more businesses to keep our strong economic engine running and to try to generate the revenue we need to build a great city and community. So one, one of the projects I'm passionate about is bringing the film industry to Palmdale so they can film more television shows and movies here. And the city owns a small studio building that we're renovating right now that's gonna bring that level of production to the area to help uh, attract more paying jobs here get those cars off the 14 freeway because a lot of those people going down to the uh, LA basin they do work in the entertainment industry so that's that's one thing that we're trying to do to attract not hundreds but thousands of well-paying jobs up here to keep people closer to their homes and, and closer to their families uh, another thing that I'm very passionate about is uh, another project uh, uh, that focuses on working to reduce the number of animals that are placed in animal care and have difficulty flying homes. 
Palmdale has partnered with Karma Rescue to provide low-cost spay and neuter programs that is available to all the residents of the city of Palmdale. Together, we can reduce euthanasia and shelter intake of unwanted, unadoptable animals. To make an appointment, please go to karmarescue.org slash Palmdale or call 310-512-ROUGH. So uh, we can all help control the pet population together if we get our pets spayed and neutered. And that's another issue that I'm very passionate about that uh, our city is challenged with. Uh, but anyway, with that, we have another video of what's happening in Palmdale. Thank you very much. After being named the most business-friendly city in Los Angeles County in 2021 by the LAEDC, Palmdale continues to bring quality jobs to the Antelope Valley and at Plant 42. The outlook is bright. Lockheed Martin's 208,000 square foot high-tech low bay advanced manufacturing facility opened last year and a new 160 foot flight tower is under construction. Lockheed and Northrop Grumman continue to expand operations at Plant 42 as part of the new and expanded contracts, including the B-20 Raider and the F-35 programs. To help meet the need for a qualified aerospace workforce, the city, in partnership with Antelope Valley College and LA County's America's Job Center of California, are helping train veterans for careers in aerospace. Local veterans are trained in entry-level aircraft assembly and manufacturing, filling much-needed positions with Northrop. Expansion at the AVC College in Palmdale with a nationally recognized AFAB training continues as they have added another 22,000 square feet of training space and are partnering with the Air Force Research Lab to create a makerspace for use by everyone from research faculty, industry engineers, high schoolers, and our engineering students. Looking ahead, there are some key projects happening that will help create even more job growth and opportunities. One is a new partnership with the Covington Group to develop a phased plan of industrial, aerospace industrial, and employment flex space aimed at supporting and enhancing operations at U.S. Air Force Plant 42. The first phase will be built on 96 acres and include five buildings at approximately 2.06 million square feet and bring in about 1,000 jobs. Additional phases will bring the total to almost 6 million square feet of industrial space to support our local industries and attract new business. Northrop, U.S. Tool Group, and Blue Hinge also expanded their operations and opened new facilities in the Fairway Business Park. To help bring a wider variety of industries to Palmdale, the city worked with the Simi Valley Company with a 60-year track record, Precon Products, to expand its operations in Palmdale, opening a facility at 65th Street East and Avenue T. Precon produces pre-cast concrete items such as manholes, catch basins, and reinforced concrete pipe. And lastly, the city is also creating a new production space to support the film industry. The Palmdale Film Stage is currently under construction, with completion expected in early fall. This 6,000 square foot creative warehouse will be able to accommodate a variety of productions, including music videos, film television, photo shoots, and more. It will be owned and operated by the city to ensure a film-friendly environment for potential users. And Palmdale is also working hard on creating and updating our infrastructure to be ready for our future growth. Indeed, good infrastructure is vital to the success and well-being of any community. We celebrate the completion of the Pear Blossom Highway Reconstruction Project. This mammoth undertaking in conjunction with the County of Los Angeles entailed the full removal and rebuild of a new roadway section approximately 3.2 miles from 25th Street East to 55th Street East. We also performed a major road overlay project on Avenue S. Over 10 lane miles were resurfaced with 2.5 inches of new polymer modified asphalt concrete pavement along with other surface improvements. Palmdale's Avenue R Complete Streets and Safe Routes project is another infrastructure enhancement. The $13.3 million federally funded project will widen Avenue R, create walkable routes with sidewalks, install Class 2 bike lanes, increase overall safety for all road users, improve signalized intersections, and will aesthetically enhance the corridor. Improvements will also be made at the intersection of Avenue R4 and 11th Street East. Construction on this two-year project has begun. Another partnership this time with the County of Los Angeles helped the city establish the largest EIFD, or Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District, in California. It covers over 27,000 acres of land and will fund over $176 million in new infrastructure projects, helping to accelerate $3.5 billion in private sector investment. 
That's an economic boost that will bring more jobs closer to home. One of the lessons learned from the pandemic was the digital divide between those who had access to the internet technologies and those who did not. To address this, the city has contracted with Sci-Fi Networks, who will invest approximately $160 million in Palmdale to deploy 800 miles of fiber throughout the city. Once completed, essentially every home and every business in Palmdale will have access to high-speed internet. Work is expected to begin this fall. Palmdale will continue to position itself for more job growth. And as we wrap up our new general plan this year, the first update in over two decades, we will create a new and better pathway to a more sustainable, prosperous, and livable city. So before I go with the script, um, I just want to say a few personal words. Um, first, I'm one year older than the city. Uh, I was born on the 23rd, 1962, so I'm going to be 60 on the 23rd. Um, and tomorrow will actually mark my one year anniversary date of being diagnosed with stage four cancer. That's monumental because I didn't know that I would make it this long and I'm doing great. I've had, I've had amazing treatment with the doctors here in the Antelope Valley and I believe in the power of prayer. So thank you all for all of your prayers, your good thoughts, your good vibes. Whatever you're sending my way is working. Because if I didn't tell you, you probably would not have known. I feel great, I'm doing wonderful, and I plan to live a lot longer. Um, so let me go back to script now. I just want to say thank you to everybody before I went to my script. So yes, I am Councilwoman Laura Betancourt with District 3. And my love and passion for the city um, is expressed with my efforts to control crime and in increase the quality of living here in the Antelope Valley and in Palmdale. Um, here in the city of Palmdale, public safety is a top priority. We work hard with our partners to build great communities and we're addressing key issues such as homelessness and crime. The city of Palmdale has long been a proponent of community-oriented policing and our staff works together with the Sheriff's Department, our residents, and our businesses to keep Palmdale clean and safe. You as a community have a, a right, really, to go to public places and have them safe. You should never worry about going to a park, going to a store, going to a business. As business owners, you want to know that your business is safe, that your customers are safe, that your employees are safe. And that's always been my goal. I've been in the Antelope Valley since the mid 80s. I used to work uh, for Northrop on the B2 bomber project and when they started doing layoffs I went into law enforcement and that's where I've been for the last 24 and a half years. And that 24 and a half years with the Sheriff's Department has been right here in the Antelope Valley. I have not strayed to any of the other stations. I have dedicated my efforts to improving the Antelope Valley and for the last several years I, I've been in Palmdale but it's always been a regional effort um, to make sure that whether you live in Palmdale or Lancaster or your business is Palmdale or Lancaster, that we're keeping you as safe as we possibly can. Um, let me go back to script, sorry. <laughs> um, our goals as a shared community, working with our partners with the, with the Sheriff's Department and Neighborhood Watches and all of the residents, our shared goals should be these things. We want to always focus on reducing crime, both property crime and crimes of violence. We need to stop graffiti, and we're working very hard to do that right now, and also vandalisms. A beautiful city is a place where people want to live, and a place where people want to come, and where businesses want to come to. So it's important that we keep our parents up. Just like food that we had, you eat with your eyes, same with a city. If it's a beautiful city, people want to go there. So that should be one of our goals. We want to continue to build stronger um, relationships between the police and the, the community. We want to improve the quality of life for all of our residents. And we want to make sure that we increase our youth activities so that youth have somewhere to go, something to do that's productive and positive, as opposed to other things that they could be doing with their time. Um, I, do, I do keep very close tabs on our crime stats uh, for the Sheriff's Department and for the City of Palmdale, and I'm proud to report that the crime stats for 2021 showed once again that the City of Palmdale was able to reduce crime for another consecutive year with a 5.4% drop from 2020. Palmdale's crime rate now stands, at, at least it stood at, in 2021, at 177 Part 1 crimes 
for every 10,000 residents. Um, that's the lowest it's been since we've been tracking numbers for the city of Palmdale. And that success could not have come without the efforts of everybody in this room, with every resident in our city. So give yourself a hand because you guys helped this happen. We're also, um, the city of Palmdale is also leading innovative approaches to some of our toughest issues, things like homelessness. Um, but we also have a big foster um, care program out here. And a lot of times the foster kids don't get the attention that they need. So right now the city of Palmdale um, is working with what's called SOS Children's Village, California. And they're acquiring properties and developing housing for families in foster care and uh, transitional housing. This is important because keeping siblings together and keeping families together helps to build a stronger community and it's much healthier. The project, um, which is being handled through our city's housing authority, is supported with a $1.2 million affordable housing fund that will provide townhouse style house houses that enable large families to live with their siblings, receive care, and support from a full-time professionally trained foster parent and they will have case managers and support staff on site to help them in their time of need. Um, I could go on and on because I absolutely love what I do. I love this city. I've raised my, my daughter in the city. My two grandchildren are being raised in the city and I plan on living in the city for a very long time. <laughs> absolutely. So instead of me continuing on, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next video. So thank you all. Some programs that continue to build strong relationships include the monthly Coffee with a Deputy held in various locations throughout the city. It's an opportunity for law enforcement and city staff to connect with residents and businesses in a casual environment. Neighborhood Watch brings people together with a common goal of building strong, safe neighborhoods. Building on that are our Park Connect events, bringing music, games, and the chance to engage with city representatives and sheriff deputies in each of our parks. Also in partnership with the Palmdale Sheriff Station, the city has implemented a community Community Clergy Connect program as a resource for residents experiencing domestic violence. Graffiti abatement is an additional service which helps to prevent vandalism and property crime. Palmdale launched the Say It Don't Spray It campaign to encourage residents and businesses to keep our community safe and beautiful by reporting graffiti. In the event of a public health emergency or local disaster, such as a pandemic or wildfire, Palmdale's Emergency Services Division provides a comprehensive and integrated emergency response system that coordinates the city and community resources through prevention, preparedness, mitigation, and recovery efforts. The city will build a state-of-the-art emergency operations center, or EOC, with new technology and systems to effectively respond to all emergencies impacting the community. For our city to continue to grow, prosper, and offer opportunities for the next generation, it is also critical that we have adequate and abundant housing opportunities in place to meet the needs of our residents and businesses who are recruiting their workforces. While the AV is nowhere close to the boom years of the 80s and 90s in terms of housing growth, the demand for quality housing is now being met by several projects. There are currently 2,095 single-family homes and 644 multifamily homes under or planned for construction construction this year, with more coming up in the near future. Some of the projects include Joshua Ranch, located off Avenue P12, adding 59 new homes already this year, with another 47 in construction. Ritter Ranch, which received approval for its first phase of 553 homes, which will jumpstart this development once again. Ana Verde is set to add 1,868 units, with 1,320 of those units age-restricted to seniors 55 years and older. The proposed senior active adult community includes single-family detached residences, single-family attached condos and townhomes, as well as multi-family residential units. La Terra recently broke ground on the region's first new market rate multifamily project in over 20 years. The project includes 344 units of apartment housing, including 36 built for rent 
townhomes. The site is located directly adjacent to the Antelope Valley Mall. Project amenities will include a resort pool, cabanas, outdoor fireplaces, a pet park with pet wash, and a fitness center. Palm Vista Senior Living, a new state-of-the-art senior living community, opened this year and features 47 assisted living studio apartments, 23 assisted living one-bedroom apartments, five memory care private suites, and 20 memory care companion rooms. It also features a spacious main living room, a library, a fitness center with on-site physical and occupational therapy, a virtual reality sensory room, two courtyards, a theater, game room, arts and crafts room, sports bar, and a salon. And the Homes for Families Housing Development for Veterans finished construction on 16 new homes and saw 16 veteran families move into their own new homes in 2021. Construction of the next six units is now underway. These exciting new projects are helping Palmdale continue to be a place to call home. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Juan Carrillo, Council Member for District 4. And with all the partnerships that we talked about, it helps create an environment where businesses can grow and thrive. And it gives all the residents of the AVA reason to keep their dollars here when they have the resources and shopping opportunities they need. And now for the uh, fun part of the program, we are going to see what's coming to Palmdale and come over take a look to this video. Thank you. Emerging from the challenges of the pandemic, Palmdale experienced a retail renaissance, increasing retail sales by 14% from the previous year and adding over 335 new businesses. Two new hotels recently opened, the Doubletree by Hilton on Palmdale Boulevard and Fairfield Inn & Suites by Marriott on 10th Street West and 08. Plans are under review for two more hotels, including Woodspring Suites, all as a result of the ramped up operations at Plant 42, high demand by contractors and bustling sports tourism on the weekends. On the medical front, Palmdale Regional Medical Center opened The Birthplace, their new 33,000 square foot new labor and delivery unit. It is the first new labor and delivery unit in Palmdale in over 40 years. It also entered into an affiliation with City of Hope, one of the largest cancer research and treatment organizations in the United States to better support cancer patients in the AV. Kaiser Permanente opened a new on-site lab at its medical offices on Avenue S, allowing patients to have testing done in the same location as their medical visits. As for retail, there were several new openings in Palmdale this year, including Rosie's Taco Shop in the Antelope Valley Mall Food Court, Black Bear Diner, Juice It Up, Wing Stop, Dutch Bros, Original Karen's Kitchen, Share Tea, Boss J's, and Lo Cipote, Salvadorian Grill and Bakery. On the city's east side, on the 47th Street East Corridor Miracle Mile, welcomed Wendy's and Chipotle. Construction is complete on the east side for the new Pilot Flying J, the largest operator of travel centers in North America. It's scheduled to open this month. Some exciting new construction will be coming to Palmdale, including the development of a new 1 million square foot industrial building on the southeast corner of Avenue M and 10th Street West. The city is finalizing a deal that will bring a new national tenant to this location, creating hundreds of jobs for AV residents. Stay tuned for an announcement soon. As part of the project, city staff worked closely with the developer to protect Joshua trees, including the creation of two on-site Joshua tree preserves and an additional 160 acres off-site. The project will also include significant off-site improvements, including the widening of Avenue M and 10th Street West, the installation of landscaping, a buffered bike lane, and two signals to increase safety and traffic flows. And now, here's what's coming to Palmdale. During the next year, the city will welcome several new businesses. Pier 88, Ceviche, Sushi Bar, Nothing Bunt Cakes, and Pollo Campero. Raising Canes is coming to Palmdale at the Antelope Valley Mall. And the long-awaited opening of Sprouts will take place at the Palmdale Marketplace on 10th Street West in the fall. These are just some of the many reasons AV residents have to stay local and shop local. In doing so, you're helping friends and neighbors thrive and helping build a stronger community for us all. On behalf of all of our businesses, their employees, our students and residents, we thank you for always shopping local.
So, you know, with all the partnerships we've talked about, it creates an environment where, you know, businesses can grow and thrive. Uh, so, um, breaking news, Pilot is actually open. And if you get their app, now anybody paying too much for gas? They got an app, you can save money on gas. So you go by there, it's an amazing center. Uh, they got a, a Subway and uh, who else is in there? Donut shop or something? You got all your essentials, right? So <laughs> that 47th Street, you know, years ago was all supposed to be houses. And we, I remember I was trying to figure out how do we mitigate the noise and the traffic to the homes? How about putting businesses there? And with the new sewer coming down there, with the improvements that they did at Pilot, you guys are, that's the new 10th Street West. That's why they call it the Miracle Mile over there. So you guys on the east side, hang on. You're going to get the traffic we got. So, <laughs> so I want to thank the, the Palmdale team. Listen, who, where's our communications and production team and, and staff here? Come on, you guys. <laughs> and, and, and all of our folks from the chamber that helped put this together. So. The, the, and, and the hotel as well, all right? That's a good food. Two lines next time. But it just stuff just doesn't happen. And it's a lot of work. People put their hearts and souls into this because it's meaningful for them. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for, for all the hard work that they did. Um, you know, something else, too, that uh, uh, just happened. Uh, there was a little place over by the mall that had the most amazing cheesecake, Michi's. And now they have grown, they outgrew their spot, and they've got their own place off of 22nd over there, next to some other really fabulous restaurants and things at 22nd and uh, Palmdale Boulevard. So go support Michi's, they do a great job over there too. Uh, I want to thank each of my colleagues on the city council for coming out here today to support this operation, to support the city, take the time from their day uh, and their other activities to get this information out and, and put a personal touch in all this for everybody. We've got a lot to be proud of here in our town. We celebrate continued growth. We celebrate lower crime rates. Uh, we celebrate Com uh, Palmdale has the small town values that we, we, that we all, uh, and family oriented community that we all uh, enjoy. And we, we still have those conveniences of a modern metropolitan area. It's been an amazing 60 year journey uh, and, and with so many successes uh, along the way. And you know, I continue to promise the residents of yesterday, today and tomorrow, our future is going to be bright. There's a lot of changes coming. Pay attention. Vote. It's your choice, folks. Be out there. Be a part of the solution. We got people out there working every day, helping with the problems we've talked about with the graffiti cleanup and with the trash pickup. You know, last year, volunteers cleared out over a thousand tons of trash out of the Barrel Springs area. Is that amazing or what? Go, go take a walk over there. It's a totally different environment than it was a year ago, you guys. Uh, so I want to conclude by saying, you know, happy birthday to the city of Palmdale. Thank the staff and everybody. Join us at our music in the park on August 25th uh, at uh, Mazari Park, 5 to 7.30. We're going to have treats, uh, commemorative items. Uh, I think we've got some little tchotchke stuff on the tables here too, right? You know, some coins and things. Um, we're going to cut another birthday cake over there, right, at 5.30. And... Uh, Everybody, have a great afternoon. Get some cake, otherwise the staff's going to take it and, you know, they don't need it any more than I do. So, thank you everybody. Thank the chambers and thank the staff. Thank you everybody.